Well, hello there. This is stream number 61. And today I'm going to be working on a class called Twitch Message. Actually, it's, I have this typo a lot of places. It's not Twitch Message Transport. It's Twitch Network Transport. I don't know why I'm writing Twitch Message Transport. Anyway, it's called Twitch Network Transport. And uh, first of all, I wanted to thank Faz for subscribing. He or she subscribed a couple days ago, actually not a couple days ago, like 11 days ago, and didn't notice. And it's because I didn't have stream elements set up to alert me about subs and follows and stuff like that. So I do apologize. And in no way do I expect or, I don't know, I'm looking for subscriptions or follows. It's just a sort of built into Twitch and I do this for fun and for um, exercise, I guess, just to make sure I'm still um, doing what I, what I enjoy doing, which is coding, and don't expect anybody to subscribe or follow, but it's always appreciated. So uh, we'll, I'll try to recognize people who do that in the future a little bit better. And another thing that I, I should put in here in this announcements is um, uh, from now on, Stream elements will be spamming every five minutes. Hopefully, it'll we'll see it in the next few minutes. A message with a link to this page. So I'll need to change that every stream. But basically, people who come in and lurk will maybe not have an, any idea of what I'm doing, and if they watch long enough, like five minutes or so, they should see a stream elements text chat on the in the chat that will uh, lead them to this page. And then they can kind of see uh, sort of the overview of what I'm trying to do in the stream. And maybe that'll help people um, not be so confused and and maybe get oriented a little bit better. People who are watching on YouTube probably don't have this problem because they can watch from the beginning. And I always try to start with my plan page. So if you're watching now, there should be a link in my panels below to the notebook. And then this log section has a page for every stream. And we're on 61 now. And let's see, if you're on YouTube, I need, I need to put this in my notebook, in my notes here. Uh, check YouTube channel page to make sure there's a link to the note. In the notebook there. I don't remember if there is or not, and I keep forgetting to check there. Anyway, I want everyone to be able to see this notebook because it has sort of my plans, my notes, and also my research. So if I, when I looked into how to write a Twitch bot, for example, I have all the links and things that I learned kind of written down here. So if you wanted to do a similar thing or just read about like what I had to read, you can check it out. So yeah, today, working on Twitch network transport and to give a sort of high level overview of what, what it does. The last few stream has, streams I've been working on this Twitch messaging class and it's sort of abstracted away from how to actually get to the network. It just deals with the protocol, the syntax for Twitch chat and it relies on an object through a pure virtual interface class called Twitch connection to get to the network and to send and receive messages. So way back, even before I started writing stuff on Twitch, I had made this class called Network Connection in a library called System Abstractions to handle making network connections, disconnections, sending and receiving messages. And I named it System Abstractions because it uses operating system specific things like sockets that are different on different operating systems like Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, they're all slightly different. So, so that upper level apps and upper level libraries don't need to worry about differences between OSs. They can be more cross platform. They can rely on this abstraction layer, which has code, which is different for each OS and it kind of hides those differences away. But still there's something missing. This network connection class has its own API. It's not exactly the same as the Twitch connection requirements. 
as detailed in that interface. So this Twitch network transfer connection is going to be the glue layer, so to speak, or the adapter. It's going to take a network connection and adapt it to work with Twitch connection. And while we're doing that, I had already written in the last 10 streams, somewhere back here, this classical TLS decorator. And if you know about the decorator pattern, it takes an interface as implemented by some class and either changes or adds functionality to it and then provides the result as the same interface. So it's sort of like uh, a transparent to the upper layer, like the upper layer doesn't know the difference between the decorator and the, and the actual network connection, but the decorator can do additional stuff. In our case, it's going to add security. Transport layer security is what TLS stands for. We're using a library from LibreSSL called libTLS, and that handles making sure our connection is secure using a key exchange and encryption. So all this stuff here is basically to glue a Twitch messaging class to actual socket APIs in the operating system so that we can talk to Twitch. Because up until now, this Twitch messaging class has just been talking to our test framework, which is sort of simulating the entire system around it. Like, if we're not really talking to Twitch, we're talking to our simulated test framework. But we're going to, with, through, through, these, through this connection and this decorator, we're going to be able to connect it to the rest of the classes we wrote to talk to the real internet, to the real Twitch server. So I had started that in the last stream. And... Here's the class, Twitch Network Transfer Connection, so it implements Twitch Connection. Twitch Connection just has one method called connect, and actually, I don't actually I don't know if this is correct. I was I had taken another class, which was sort of like what Twitch Network Transfer had to be, and, and was kind of adapting it. So I'm actually need to double check this. Okay, it is different. So yeah, we need to take we need to take all of this and replace this. So it's slightly different. Yeah, that's where that's where I left off last time. I sort of left off in an incomplete work in progress state where I had taken some similar adapter and I was changing it to fit this particular interface cuz this is sort of a a common pattern for how I write code. I like to write classes that are only responsible for one thing. So the Twitch messaging class is only responsible for talking to Twitch. It doesn't know how, it doesn't know about TCP, it doesn't know about TLS, it doesn't know about sockets, and what knows about sockets, TLS, and all that, and, and connections are those other classes. So how do you connect things together is through integration. And this is, this being this uh, tra ne Twitch network transport connection, this is an integration component. It's pulling together Twitch messaging with the socket stuff. So we're, we're seeing it's implementing an interface, and, when, and in the bodies of these methods, we'll see how it uses the other classes, kind of pulls things together. So right, the, the idea with Twitch connection interface is the upper layer is going to set functions that will be called when you receive a message or when you uh, get disconnected. And then there are three things that the upper layer can do. It can connect to Twitch, disconnect from Twitch, and send a message to Twitch. Pretty simple, right? So far, so good. So we're going to be obviously adding more things, but this is just the simple stuff to connect. Actually, I don't even think we have the, the right code to join a, a chat room, do we? Depends on what I actually put in the messaging test. Do we have a test for joining a chat room? Oh, we do. Okay, so it's jo there's join. Oh, right, right. The, the, these are, I was getting confused. This is not the interface from the app to Twitch messaging. This is the next layer down. Twitch messaging has its own interface that's sort of off the top of the screen. This one is from Twitch messaging down to the network connection. So this is just connecting to the server and then sending, in this case, the message is not a chat message, it's, it's the raw bytes that are going over the network. So the Twitch messaging class is sort of 
turning a, a method like, actually, I should show you that, the Twitch messaging interface. Log in, right? Log out. Join a channel. Leave a channel. Sending a message. It's translate. Its job is to translate that into underlying sending of bytes to a network connection. Now, how you make the network connection and how you actually send bytes, that's the job of this layer, this network transport layer, which is going to use an even lower level thing, the network connection, to do it. Okay, I'm just looking to see. This is stuff I had copied from another class. So I'm not sure if I need to keep it or, 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 or not. Do I use that? Okay, this is for setting a fact. I think I don't want this. Yeah, I think I was going to go with this class being fully integrated. So this connection class will know about the decorator. And so there doesn't need to be a factory for, for creating the, uh, fac the any decorator. So we're going to remove that. And we're going to remove this. So be very simple. You just create it. And you might subscribe to Diagnostics. But otherwise, you're going to create it and just give it to the Twitch messaging class. And it'll use these API functions. Okay, it's, has it been five minutes yet? It's been more than five minutes. I don't know why my stream elements is not doing the chat. But let me go, hold on. Go uh, find out why. Pardon me a second. Timer's enabled. I don't know why it's not running. Maybe it needs to be... There's a section in timers for stream elements that's called offline interval, and I had to turn that off. I thought that was if you wanted to chat while you're offline, but I don't know. I haven't seen it run, so I'm going to try it again. Anyway, back to work. Hopefully stream elements will wake up and chat. Let me actually type in chat and say, hello, stream elements, are you there? Maybe it's waiting for a chat message. Let's see if that wakes it up. Don't know. Anyway, back to work here. Right, so yeah, this is obviously copied. You can see where I copied it from. So we need to change this. This is a Twitch required by the Twitch library. And yes. Actually, we're gonna, I was thinking about making all connections secure. So basically by design here, we'll, we're going to say, we're tying three classes together, the Twitch connection interface, network connection class, and then the TLS decorator. And I think it's the same word for both the class yeah, bo both the class and the namespace. Yep. TLS decorator. The class which adds transport layer security. Let's see if I remember my shortcuts here. Nope. I had a fold. Yeah, uh, no, not fold. Um wrap alt q there we go decorate this class which adds transfer their security uh to to a network connection right so this custom we're not going to allow this customization i think we're going to make it Sort of crystallized. Hold on a sec.
All right. Someone was at the door. Okay. New network connection. Factory. We're not going to need that. So. Don't need this. This is all going to be different. Actually, I wonder wondering what's going on here. Why did I have okay. I know I I need to go back to what I copied from to understand what I was trying to do here. Did I copy from server maybe? Okay, now I'm kind of lost. Let's let me do a search for this. Okay, it is copied from here. I'm just wondering why did I put in this, this struct connection adapter when I have this connection object. Oh, because I had, um, right, I had another class that made a connection every, every time you want a new one. So yeah, I was going to fold those two together. So really what I want to do is put this in here. And then we're going to just remove this connection adapter thingy. Oh, actually not completely remove it because we still need this one. It just gets folded in to this one. And since we know that it's going to be network connection, I don't have to go through the abstract interface, do I? Cool. Yeah, so this this is stuff that gets all removed. And this we're going to, we're going to need to implement. Okay. I normally don't use VS Code to, to do this. I'm more comfortable still with Visual Studio. So I'm kind of, fi kind of fighting my editor a little bit. I'm, I'm kind of in a transition period between going between using Visual Studio for all my editing stuff and using Visual Studio Code. Moving towards Visual Studio Code because I can do the same editor work on Linux or Mac. But there's still some stuff I'm not comfortable with in uh, doing in VS Code, like running the build system. So I'm going to be switching over to VS, the uh, Visual Studio itself in a bit. Actually, probably pretty soon. I think there's going to be a lot of work to the unit tests here to adapt, to, to change them. I think I'll just connect this into the build system and then go from there. So. I know we're going to need system abstractions to Twitch, and also we want TLS 
decorator. And then the unit tests just need, right, just need Twitch network transport. System abstractions for probably the diagnostic stuff. I need to pull it into the build system by going to my top level CMake list and adding it in. Hey, look, there's stream elements. So yeah, that link there should work in uh, showing you, hold on. Showing you to this page to sort of explain what I'm doing today. So I don't have to keep referring back to that. If you're looking and you're like wondering what the heck am I working on, stream elements every few minutes or so it'll should re pop up a link that you can click on to see it see my plan okay so i needed to add subdirectory twitch network transport okay I, when i add something like that to the cmake list so i need to go back to my build directory and run cmake again that rebuilds the visual studio project files and when i go back to visual studio which is say it's been modified to so reload and now twitch network transport shows up in the libraries list and the test should have twitch network transport tests so let's first make sure twitch network transport builds i guess build all right so i forgot to Put the class name in front of all these guys. Try again. Connect must return a value. Okay, how about true? I wish I have a. Yeah, doesn't matter. Just needed to compile. Okay, the library builds. So now I'm going to focus on the tests. Test first. This is test driven development. So I kind of cheated and I copied some tests from a similar adapter. And so there's going to be a lot of crud I need to clean out and uh, replace or rename. So we're going to get in right into that. Just from the top down. Yeah, this is just, so this is part of a test fixture. I use Google test, which is included with this gtest.h. And it lets you write tests that look like this. So you say test underscore f means you're using a fixture. And this is the name of your test fixture or your test suite or whatever. And this is the name that is a unique for each test. Since it's underscore F, it's a fixture. That means this code is run within the context of a fixture class object. And this is the class. So if we look at that class, we'll see it has some additional properties like server and transport and clients. So it lets us like do some boilerplate setup and tear down for all tests in this fixture. So like there's a, there's something that sets up the transport, the server and the clients. And let's just write, just focus on the actual test in the, in the bodies of each test. So for example, this breaking the connection from the server side says, well, if we ask the transport to connect us to the server at localhost and ask our test framework server what port number it's on and give it uh, these these are also part of the test fixture, some default delegates that when we wait for a connection, it will succeed. And then if we're from the server side, we close the connection. We then will succeed if we wait for that server side connection to, to be broken. So yeah, any kind of asserts or expects are the actual tests. If they fail, then the test is marked failure and, and, and they succeed. It reaches the end and says, oh, test passed. So all these tests, I kind of want the same kinds of tests, but the bodies of the tests are going to be a lot, a lot different. And yeah, so the, the reg squigglies in Visual Studio kind of help me out by saying, well, this is, this is, needs to be changed, right? This is now Twitch network transport. And it's not transport, it's connection. It's a little bit different semantics. Instead of asking a transport to connect us, we're going to ask a connection to go connect. So instead of getting a connection back, we're just going to start with a connection and just tell it to go. So we're still going to have a fake Twitch server. I uh, will keep that. 
This all looks good. Okay, this is different. Okay, I think this name is different. Yeah, message received delegate instead of data received delegate. Hey there again, stream elements. How are you doing? Wonder if today I'm only being viewed by bots. How do I see that? It looks like I'm I only have bots. I don't have any real people watching. That's fine. I put it up on YouTube and people watch it later. If you do want to watch live, there's a link to watch live. Oh, there's SourceFi. You're not a bot, are you? <laughs> Adam Hack. Not a bot. Yeah, today has been very quiet. I think I'm being mo mostly watched by bots. But that's fine. I sort of get nervous when a lot of people watch me, and I still feel like I'm new at streaming, so I'm cool with not very many viewers yet. Okay, I think I yeah have some different names here. The semantics are all the same, it's just the names are a little different. Yeah, still have the same connect and break semantics, so we'll keep, be able to keep all that stuff. Okay, this is now connection. That I'll probably be searching and replacing a lot, so... And these... I like that. Okay, that's a little different. Yeah, it says the string. Actually, it's a const reference to a string instead of a vector of data. Let's make this data received into a messages received. Once any, well, just same semantics, only it's going to be. Like that, just for just to make it easy. Actually, it makes this one a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? Actually, let's just turn this into messages. This is the number of messages to await, and then we yeah, let's make it. Make it a little bit simpler there. We won't count bytes, we'll just count messages. This is still the same because on the other side, actually, did I have this right? Don't know if I got that right. Let me see this. Okay, I don't have this. Oh, no, no, I do. It's just backwards. Because these delegates are given to the client, not the server. This data received, it's from the client, yes. So this means it's from, the other one is from the server. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, still, that doesn't, seem, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Actually, no, that's, that is right. Sorry. It's messages received from the server that have been turned into upper level messages. Yeah, the, it's a uh, it's text received from the Twitch server. Let's 
So actually, I can just make this a pushback. Makes makes this a little bit simpler. And that was some other name, right? What did I call that? Disconnected delegate. There's stream elements giving us the link. Uh, okay, this is a little bit different. It doesn't have any argument. There we go. All right, so this is just connection. And with with this, the Twitch connect, there are no arguments, I think. Okay, it doesn't like the word connection. Isn't that what I named it? I did name it that. I oh, know that's within the client. It's the mock. It, okay, here it is. Doesn't like it. Doesn't like it though. I think it's just confused. So if I just turn it into that. Oh, oh wait, it's because it's the same name. Okay, yeah, there is no. Right, it it's not the connection. It's the connect dead. Assert true connected. And then assert that this is, again, the server waiting for that Twitch to actually try to connect to it. All right, so same thing here. Actually, and I don't need this flag because we're not going to check it. And what did I call it uh, to to close? It's a Twitch connection. Disconnect, okay, not break. And, it, and it's uh, an object. No argument. Okay. Yeah, all, all this gets replaced here. Okay, send data is different, right? It's send, it's just send and there's a message. So send. Okay, so I guess we'll just call it a string. Hello world. Why not, right? Yeah, we need to actually need to turn it into its bytes. So vector of bytes. Test data as bytes. Like that to get I mean, I don't know why it doesn't warn me, but it's gonna be trying to con compare a string to a vector of integer so so anyway that should fix it right server send okay yeah let's make it let's do this but do it. send the others in the other direction it's going to send the data as bytes and then it's not data received. What do we name it? That's in the in the fixture, right? Messages received, right. Okay, so it's slightly different. Instead of it being 
accumulated buffer of all the bytes. It's, it's a vector of strings. So we're going to assemble what we expect here. And this is messages received. It's going to be, we have to do this, this sort of a weird syntax. test data. I don't know why, but something to do with this macro, but if I were to leave that out, if, if I were to just make it like that, it doesn't work. If I turn it into that, which is the compiler should be able to figure out, it quiets it down. Don't know why. Okay, yeah, we don't need to test this connection factor stuff since we're not going to provide that extension point. And this as well. That's basically it with the tests. There is a problem though, in that when we tell connection object to connect, it's by default gonna connect to the real Twitch. We want it to connect to our pretend Twitch. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of a, what do you call it? Not a back door, but like a, uh, a test hook. We'll say connection. Actually, we need to do it after we know the port number of our mock server. We know it at this point, I think. Right? So we say connection dot set set server I don't know, info? Info, why not? So it'll be localhost and then a port number. Get bound port. So that doesn't exist. So we need we need to add that to Twitch messaging. Oh wait a minute, no, not Twitch messaging. What am I thinking about? That's the connection object for Twitch network transport. So right, not not to the Twitch connection interface, but to the actual concrete implementation. So whoever, the app that creates this guy will have access to the diagnostics and the, obviously the construction and now setting of the server info. So if you don't call it, it'll go to the, the real Twitch server by default. Otherwise this will be used to override the server we're actually connect to. Host, host name. Port number. I used uint 16t, so I like to do standard int whenever I have that. And also I use string, right? So string. You can see I mix C and C++ headers. Mostly I, I, I use like, this is a standard C99 type, so there's a wrapper for it technically in C++, but it doesn't add anything, so I like to just use the C API directly. Use the C API directly when I, there's nothing added by C++, whereas C standard string is definitely not in C, so we go through C++ to use it. All right. This method is used to override the host name and port number of the Twitch server. Uh, you might want to do this, for example, uh, when testing this class in order to have it connect to a test server and not the real Twitch server. Host name. Port number. This is the host name or IP address in string format of the server to which to connect. This is the TC, uh, the IP, or this is the TCP port number of the 
server to which to connect. All right. So let's implement that. So right here. We're doing, again, test-driven development, so there's nothing in the thing we're testing at first until we write tests. We see we want to see the tests fail, and then we will fill in the code to make the tests pass. So I don't actually need to do anything in the implementation yet. We just need it to compile. Hey, Offbeat Jenny. How's it going? Yeah, I added... Are you saying woe to the stream elements thing? I, I'm assuming so. I I added that because like people jump into the channel and they're like, "What the heck is he doing?" I thought it would be cool to, to, ha to have it have them start at this page here. That kind of shows my plan and what I'm doing, and maybe that gives people a little bit a better idea like where to start understanding what I'm doing. But we'll see. All right, so it's compiling, and now I'm going to run my tests, which are all going to fail. Twitch. Network transport test debug fail fail yeah they're, they're all failing to connect right as they as expected because the connect doesn't actually do anything it just says it connected they're they're failing on the line where where we're awaiting the connection to come in to the fake server so at this point the test should be done. And what are we testing? We can connect. We can break the connection from either end. We can have the client send something. We can have the server send something. So pretty basic stuff, right? But pretty fundamental and and, and elementary. Oh yeah, Afi Chendi. By the way, that stream elements. Its days are numbered for me because if I'm successful, I want my bot to be doing the work that stream elements does now. In addition to asking cool math questions, giving people points for answering the, the question correctly. Oh, I, I also had an idea yesterday. I don't know what people would like, but right now I was planning for the math bot in Twitch to just ask random math questions and the first person to answer correctly would score a point or something. But I was also thinking, what if people asked math bot questions and it would just try to figure out what math question you asked and then try to answer it? Maybe we'll start off with just simple, like it can handle numbers and and uh, arithmetic, but maybe extend it to like doing searches for you. So it could, uh, like if it can't fi it can't parse the question, maybe we'd do a Google search and then if it would give you the top hit or something. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, so let's start from the first test, try to get it to work. Connect. What should connect do? I think what we should do is just make one of these, right? In fact, why do we even why do we even have a pointer? So, if you hear background noise, by the way, it's other people in the house, so don't be alarmed. I'm just trying to remember how this works. All right, so yeah, we can make one of these network connection objects and then just call connect when we need to. Yeah, so we'll, we don't need a pointer. We will just directly have one. Actually, no, we, we need a... No, we're gonna have two things, right? Let's start with, one. we're going to have two things. We're going to have the network connection, but we're also going to have the TLS decorator. Let's put it in now, even though we won't use it. Yes, I do have a dog. I have a Havanese dog. And she is playing around with my son right now. So this is the object which is providing secure providing security for the connection I'll just leave it at that and we need to make sure we include the right header for that you heard the dog bark huh but my dog's bark overwhelmed my noise gate filter or maybe when I was talking 
So we're not we're going to use that TLS adapter yet, but we'll use the adapt. So we will just oh, we need both connect and set server info to be implemented correctly for that test to work. One thing uh, for, uh, first things first. Let's let's have the server info set up. So we'll say we'll just duplicate the stuff from connect uh, which one? This one. Uh, where did I set it? These. These documentations. Paste them here because we're just going to provide storage for them. Like so. By the way, if you see something you don't understand and you're whether you're lurking or chatting, feel free to ask. I will stop and explain. So yeah, this server info is simply gonna store it right now. Okay, but here's where we need we need to be smart about what is the default host name. I don't remember what it is, so I'm gonna have to look it up. Uh, I'm gonna go to my notebook. I did my research, and I think it was this one. Let's see if that's the right one. Open a new window, please. There we go. So we're always going to use secure sockets, and so this, and we're not going to use web sockets yet. We're going to just use this host name, a port number. Is this one All right? There we go. You can override it by calling the set server info, which is what our test do does uh, up here, right? So we're gonna redirect it to ourself. Basically, this this is like a local server that that we're setting up here just to help us out. So we're opening it, and then we're getting what port number it got because it's gonna be random, and we're telling. The Twitch connection thing to connect to that guy and not the real Twitch, is, which is what it would do. It would go to this for real if we didn't call that. Okay. So now actually to have it do the connection, I think we just call adapt. Actually, it's impl adapt connect host name. Oh, hold on. There's a problem here. It's this host name, but the connect once an, an IP address is a 32-bit number. So I had this come up before, and I ended up writing a class to help us out with that, didn't I? Just need to find out where I put that. It's in system abstractions. Just don't remember where. I'll close all the things. Let me look for it. Okay. Is it here? Here, maybe? It was a static method. Get address of a host, that's it. Um, should have it exclude build, by the way. Yeah, here's where I actually used it. Right. Oh, so it's pretty simple. We just have to have check for zero, which would mean that it couldn't find the, like if you type, mistyped the URL or something. Okay, copy that and put, paste it back here in Visual Studio. So it's host name. Actually, let's fix that. I like host name or address better. We'll call this, I'll just call it address, so then this becomes address. But this is there. Actually, let's, let's change it on, in all the places. And in the header. Okay, that's good already. 
Right. So first it's going to look up the IP address given the host name or address in string form. If it can't, if the lookup fails, it's going to return false. It can't connect, right? Otherwise it's going to return, basically delegate to the adft, try to connect. And if it succeeded, return true, otherwise return false. Okay. That should be enough to get our first test running. I mean, working. Okay, almost. An exception is thrown. So whenever I see an exception, I think it's most conveni convenient just to run it in the debugger and see and see why getting an exception. All right. Access violation. Okay, so what clients? No clients. Hold on, I'm not understanding this. Oh, it's tearing down. It's calling this delegate after the delegate's been destroyed. Oh, thanks for subscribing. Chance Tyler Bastellan. Actually, I'm not sure if I should actually point out people who follow because that might be a little embarrassing to people who are lurking and just want to follow. So, but thank you. I know that happened to me like when I was first using Twitch and I followed someone and they said my name like, oh, I didn't, I'm kind of embarrassed. I didn't want them to see my name, but everyone's different. Maybe I should just assume people don't want me to point them out unless they sub. Which I totally don't expect or need or anything, but it's all, always appreciated when people follow stuff. All right, so this this is getting a, an exception because we captured this, but that object doesn't exist anymore. You can kind of see it if you look at the just stuff that's in the object. And it, at some point you'll see that it's got garbage. Okay, actually it's not garbage. What is garbage though? Probably the, this client's object. Hmm. Actually, I think it's it's because it said that this mutex object was garbage, right? F, it's all Fs. Okay, when you see this, what you can do is you can load from the um, Microsoft symbol server. That takes a little bit of time the first time, but then you get a little bit more information that it's okay. It's in the little of do lock. Yeah, so this mutex object is completely busted, right? Because it's been destroyed. Usually when you see an object that's like all garbage, it's either the pointer doesn't point to any, anything at all, it's un uninitialized, or it used to point to something and that object's been destroyed. And my hint that it's been destroyed is it's in the, if you look up the or down the call stack, I, I can see we're in the middle of a destructor. So, Things have, if things are being destroyed and you hit the exception, it's probably because you are using something that's already been destroyed. And and th and this is sort of a bad habit I get into where I capture the this pointer. There, there's no guarantee that it still exists by the time this is called. It's a little bit hard for me to figure out which object we're looking at though oh 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 yeah yeah the this is the test fixture And this delete self is being destroyed. So before that, ha I think in our in our teardown, we need to actually 
close these connections to avoid this problem. Uh, okay, where was that? Where's our tear down? Here's our tear down. Yeah, so we, we should, to avoid these callbacks happening uh, up here, we need to um, clear all these old connections out. Clients, right? So clear the clients. Let's see if that fixed it. Cool, that fixed it. So we're passing our connect test. We're not passing anything else. That's expected. We're doing one thing at a time. So after connect is break on the client side. So after we connect, it is failing, waiting for the server. Right, because disconnect doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't do anything. I think we just forward that through, right? As a uh, close. And do we need to close cleanly? I don't think so. Close immediately. Let's see if that fixed it. Yep, so we're done with that. Now on to break from the server end. So break on the server end is a little bit more difficult because that means we we need to, before we connect, we have to set up some callbacks. Actually, I think the way it works is like this. So cons auto... If can not if the connected failed, we can return immediately. Otherwise, we can return because the way I have this adapter designed. This is in previous streams. I I went over this, but you first connect, and that that actually does the network connection. But then, how does it handle the data processing? Is in a in a background thread that you start by calling process and you give it some callbacks to call something to call if you receive some message and something to call if the connection's broken from the other end that's what we're writing the test we're trying to fix the test for right now so we need to call process and that that does two things really it sets up these callbacks and also starts that background worker process that wor worker thread and that could fail right so we can return false so we're going to say console processing. Hey there, Rally Monkey. What is that? Happy Jack? Jack in the Box? Do they have like a Burger King emote too? There's an Adam's channel earlier today, and there's someone who like talks about Burger King jokes in every every chat he says, but he didn't he didn't mention any Burger King emotes. I was very disappointed. Actually, I have those as well. Do you have the year 2000 jackball? I have it right here in my hand. The year 2000 jackball. He's got like a party hat and uh, he's blowing a kazoo or something. He's He's prominently on my shelf, actually. Okay, so process needed two delegates. One for this m when a message is received. So I think what I'll do is I'll tie it back in to the adapter. Just need to be careful about it because I don't I want to avoid races. I think we'll be okay because this doesn't actually have any state other than the adapter itself, right? Okay, it has some things. We only use these when we connect. We're not using that yet. This we don't give to the adapt. Okay, so we should be we should be fine. So rather than using Landos, I think I'm going to actually make a method that has that signature and use bind. So here's where we'll, we'll put the method, and then we need one for when it gets broken. Okay, vector int. Give it a name, right? So on message received, and then how about on connection broken? 
and I'll just copy this documentation here, actually the whole thing. Let's say this is the, this is called whenever the connection is broken. So Raleigh Monkey, what do you think about that stream elements thing? I put that in there so that people lurking who just joined midstream will see that and then click it and then it should bring them to this page, not that page, to this page that kind of gives them an overview of what I'm doing today. I only showed that for a moment, but you can see that for yourself by clicking that link that the stream elements is sending out. This is called never more data is received from the peer of the connection. Awesome. So I'm going to use bind and this is how you do it. You do standard bind and then you bind this with ample on message received and then it has an argument. So you want to forward that by, by, by putting the placeholder marker. And then the other one is standard bind. Actually for that, I think, I think bind, you need functional. That's why it's giving me the red squigglies. Maybe not. I think I did something wrong there. Actually, that should have been fine. It might be because I haven't completed this. Let's complete it first on connection broken and that doesn't need anything else no comma oh it's not this it's impl get I think no Okay, what is the message saying? No user defined conversion. Okay, I, it's like I didn't get the signature correct of the function. Void const vector u and eight. Void. Yeah, it's the same. Okay, I don't get it. What did I do wrong? Am I rusty after just a week of not programming? Oh, I got, I am rusty. I got the order of these backwards. The method goes first, then the this, because it's a class method. I mean, a, 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 not a class method, an instance method. And then any, any arguments. And okay, the first one it was happy with, Oh yeah, that one did have a an argument as well. We're just not using it. Actually, um we don't even have to include it then. We're not not going to use it. Right? That's one of the things that you that's kind of nifty about bind is you can make two functions that don't quite match fit together. So the process wanted us to give it a function that takes a boolean argument and we're able to give it this function that doesn't take anything just by using bind and just not having any anything for that argument. So that placeholders one isn't in that bind and so it just gets dropped. Just I think it's kind of cool. So what, there are two things we're going to do if not processing. I think we want to just close it. And 
And then, regardless, we're going to return whether we're, pro we're processing or not. I think that's what I want to do. So if processing succeeded, we just return true. If it failed, we close and then return false. Cool. So this should allow the um, server-side break to work now. Do, do, do. Okay, it didn't. Let me think about why it didn't. So, four, three, five of the tests. Okay, well, where are we? Okay, wait server break. Waits for this broken flag, and that broken flag is set, correct? Set right there. Oh, we're not, we're probably not calling it though, are we? Yeah, we're not doing it because we're not doing anything in our connection broken. So here's where we would do it, right? We would say, yeah, it has to do with, th it's set here, right? Disconnected delegate. We're, we're going to need to do something like this. And then we need to store that. And where is that declared? I'm looking to it so I can copy the documentation here. Whoops. This is the function to call when the Twitch server closes its end of the connection. Exactly. And then while we're at it, let's grab the other one. So that goes with um, this one. Function to call when we receive a message. We'll need that soon anyway. We'll leave it out. I'll just did that for convenience, but we'll leave it out for now. We just need to call it. So here, we only want to call it if it's not null. If it's null, we'll have an issue calling it. And we don't need the impl actually. We're inside the impl at this point. That should work. Still doesn't work. <laughs> um, are we not setting it? Oh, we're probably not setting it in our unit to, in our setup. Yeah. So yeah, we're just calling. Can, yeah, let's set it up. In fact, we we have it here. We're just never using it. So it's it's. Connection dot set disconnected delegate disconnected delegate. Which actually I can now fold together because it's not referenced anywhere else. Right? So I can fold these together. You just take this and put it in place of that. Uh, do some clever formatting and we're done. Oh, except for this also we want to do. Set. Uh, IntelliSense is failing me. Oh, probably because I misspelled connection. All right, that worked. Or at least it built. Let's see if it worked. Okay, it worked. On to client send and server send. So client send. So we're asking the client to send that data and we're waiting for it to re be received to the server and it's not being received because that send is not doing anything. Right? Doesn't do anything. So let's do something here. Ample adaptee send message. So we just need to convert it into a vector.
message.begin, message.end. And does it return anything? No. Oh, when that happens, it means we got a really bad crash. Let's see it. We should see it in the debugger, though. It's loading symbols. Oh, yeah, because I told it to include symbols from the Microsoft symbol server. That's why it's the checkbox is off by default, because when it's on, it actually takes a while for the debugger to start up. I'll probably turn it back off unless I need it. Okay, there it is. So okay, it looks like it's a setup problem. I don't know why she's barking there, but I muted the mic for a while. Um, usually this, if you mouse into this, it tells you what has the mutex locked. This one isn't really helping me. I guess it's telling me it was destroyed. Oh, I see. It has been destroyed because we're in a different thread and yeah, it's during destruction. Yeah, so on teardown, yeah, so we set it up, we set them up on teardown, we need to close. It's the same problem where I, I set these delegates, but then this thing, when it gets destroyed, this connection is still using them. To prevent that, I think what we do is we want the connection to be closed. We want the connection to be closed before we actually destroy the framework. Disconnect will do a trick. All right, so wait server. Oh, yeah, cl client send succeeded. So we're on to server send. Server send, server send, server send. 452. Right, so here uh, from the server side, we're sending a message, and then we're waiting for that server data to arrive at the client. It's not, and that's probably because we're not doing anything on message received. Actually, we're... We're not even saving the delegate, right? So let's do that first. Save the delegate and then we'll use it, right? Simple enough. Don't need the impl actually. If it's not null, then call it. Okay, it wants a string. Easy enough, we just make a string. Message begin to message end. Very similar. You, uh, string and vector are very convertible to each other. All right. Okay, I'm missing something because it's still not being received. Let me think about this. So we set it right in the test framework in setup. We set it. It should, if it was called, it would have pushed something in, in that. And that await that we're waiting for. Await server data. Oh, wait, it's the semantics are different. I forgot about that. It used to be that await server data took the number of bytes, now it's the number of messages, so we just want one. One message. There we go. Cool. Although there is a problem in that um, we don't know if it'll, if one send message 
will translate to one one message received. It could be fragmented, right? Let me put this back to where where it was. Yeah, I feel more comfortable making this bites. All right, so we just need to change this here. Messages received. Let's let's turn this back into bytes. I think that'll be. I'll I'll just make that data actually. It's just here we have to do a little something a little bit more elaborate. So it'll be data received. Put um, insert data received. End message dot begin and message dot end. I think that'll do it. The good thing is we don't need to do this anymore. We can just make that test data again, like it was before. Uh, test data is bytes actually, and this is data received. Cool. We are in very good shape because all our tests for connecting, disconnecting, sending, and receiving are done. I'm ready to check in. So with all this passing, and let's, let's run the, just for confidence, let's run all my tests. This is gonna run uh, everything. As long as everything is passing, I'll feel really good and I'll be happy about checking this in. So that's, Actually, do I even have a Git repository for this yet? I don't. Let's get uh, in it. And git add everything. Git commit initial revision. I just need to push this onto GitHub. Let me... I'm I'm going off stream for a moment. They don't reveal any personal info and I'm going to go and create my repo for this. We're calling it Twitch Network Transport. Cool, it's created. So I'm looking at the other directory so I can just copy. So it's git remote add origin and then basically that same thing there. Git at github.com. And then I can, should be able to do git push set upstream origin master. Cool. This is new. I think. I don't think I've seen this before. That must be something they added to GitHub recently. I don't remember seeing that before. Maybe I just didn't notice. So I use this tool called Mugget that I wrote. And uh, I'll show you what I do when I'm adding a repository. So I, I, I like to have my workspace set up to where uh, each library is its own Git repository. That way I can kind of make new projects which are like assemblies of subsets of my libraries. And I have to pull in code that I don't need. And this Mugget tool helps me organize them. And so one thing that it does is it tells me, hey, Twitch Network Transport is something new that you don't have in, uh, being managed yet. So to manage it, we do Mugget add Twitch Network Transport. What it does, does a couple things, three things actually. So it will automatically add it to our gitignore because at the top level, because the top level repository is a different Git repository 
than the library. So we want the top level to ignore any changes in, in the library. The second thing it does is it goes into this XML file and it adds an entry for it. We can see it added this one. And actually those are the only two things it does, right? One thing it doesn't do yet is I have another version of my manifest for if you don't want to have an account in GitHub. This, uh, hold on. This one only works if you have not only an account in GitHub, but also an SSH key. If you don't, you want to use HTTPS. And so I, need, I, I keep that for convenience for people. I don't know if anyone uses it, but we'll, we'll keep it there just in case. It's just HTTPS colon slash slash instead of git at. So now from the perspective of the top level repository, we should only see that we're adding to the git ignore. And then we added it to the manifest for Mugget. And then this is the manual change I added to have it included in the build system. That's all we really had to do. Twitch network. So this is, this is sort of showing one of the advantages of having multiple Git repositories is from the perspective of Excalibur, my overall work, the only change here is we, we added a subdirectory and we show, we, we show where it's checked in. And then all the actual code in that, repo, in that library is in its own repository. And by the way, all this code is in GitHub and it's all MIT licensed, so viewers and lurkers are welcome to check it out okay and the other thing it said about google test i have this little hat means it's i have it pinned to a certain revision and google has since you know added changes i don't like picking up the bleeding edge of other people's code so i like to pin things like google test at a revision that i know works for me and It'll, it'll warn me that there's, the, the exclamation point here says that there's more commits that you don't have yet. The hat means you have it pinned to a specific commit. You'll see that in this repo, by the way. I mean, in this manifest, you see a revision. That's the SHA, SHA1 hash code of the commit that I have it pinned to. As in, I'm, I'm sticking to that commit and not taking their tip of their ma master branch. So yeah, otherwise, and that L, L, by the way, doesn't check GitHub for changes. I do that to speed things up. Without it, it's gonna it's actually checking with GitHub for every repository to see if there are any upstream changes I need to pull down. It should say that there aren't except for Google test. And then that, that'll, that'll be good. And then let me check my tests. Everything passed. So we're in great shape. Time to move on, I think. Let me check my stream counter. I'm at an hour and 24 minutes. Okay, we're going to keep going. So we have all the pieces. If I go back to my plan. We've done all this now. So we have the Twitch messaging class. We have this network. Okay, we haven't done everything. Because I haven't done the decorator yet. I have the messaging class. have the connection. These, of course, we I, I did previously. This is Windows. I haven't done this part need to do this part and then we'll have this whole chain ready and then we can write an, write an app which actually talks to Twitch. Let's do this decorator part first. So how do we test that? That might be interesting. Because it's going to try to do a, a key exchange with our test server. It's going to be a little bit complicated. It makes me rethink the, the hard coding of it in, in this class. See how we hard code it in there and in here. If I didn't do that, then I wouldn't need to test for it. But since I did, I'll, I'll, I'll need to test that it's actually used. I guess we can do the same thing that we did with the TLS decorator test. That used a special shim layer. A mock TLS. So we could pull that in. Just verbatim.
that's going to complicate things, though. Unless I disable it for some of the other tests. Because a connect, like a, if I go back to the tests. This connect right now just calls this connect. But if we include TLS, it'll, it'll go through the adapter, the TLS adapter, and that does a bunch of other things, which will come back to us through this uh, TLS oh, um, handshake, connect, and all this stuff, right? Might be okay though. What does connect actually do? Actually, it might be easier. No, we won't actually need a real server. We can just pretend that we're connecting to a server. Let me give it a shot. So, if I take this entire mock thing out. And we paste it into the connection tests here. Let's need to uh, include TLS decorator. Actually, it's TLS shim, isn't it? That gives us the shim, and then we can make one the same way this one makes one. Actually, that's all we need to do, isn't it? In our setup, we do the same thing. Ah. Like that. Oh, mock to I don't have that anywhere. All right, we need to add this to our fixture. Where is that declared? Okay, that's declared in the shim. Okay, so what this what the what a shim is? It's like a very thin adapter that lets you pretend to implement the, an interface or, or pass it through to a real implementation or have it go somewhere else. So it's, it's letting, it's gonna, it, it, I built it into TLS decorator so that we could test it without actually using real encryption or a real server. And we'll, we'll find it useful again here because we'll, what we'll do is we'll expect when we connect not that okay we we can actually rip out can i do this should be able to rip out that mock server completely so i i don't need network endpoint anymore i don't need server anymore i don't even need connections or do i clients Yeah, I don't need this structure anymore. Do I even need mock connection? No, I don't even need that. Right, so to await a connection, we're going to wait for TLS connect to be called, right? Hold on, um, this depends on what TLS decorator actually does in connect.
Mm, yeah, it forwards it on. So it does need to actually still connect to a real server, so... The connection stuff is still handled, yeah, by... We need, still need a real server to handle connection stuff. I need to undo all that stuff I just did. Actually, not all of it. Okay, we, we'll leave the network endpoint stuff in there. In fact, the connection stuff stays the same, right? Or should we, should we at this point expect the TLS to happen? Yeah, let's do that. So the hand, let's expect the handshake to happen. I need to look this up again. I don't remember if zero is zero the success or failure. Okay, yeah, zero is handshake complete. But we shouldn't have a record that it was called. Right, so what we can do down here, in addition to awaiting the connection to the server side, we can also assert that the mock TLS, TLS handshake called. And there's where we'll see our test break now. Right, so it's not being called because we're not using TLS yet. So now we need to update our code to actually use TLS to get that to to pass again. So we have the TLS in there, we're just not using it. So let's use it. So what we expect is after, I think it's, um. I think what we want to do is we don't want to go through the Adapty directly anymore. We want to go through, actually we can do this in the constructor. We say TLS dot, um, no, impl, TLS dot configure as client. In the lower layer, oh, it needs a shared pointer. Okay, back to using shared pointer for the adaptee. I guess that makes sense. We're sharing with the TLS class, which means we have to make it. So adapt T, make shared, network connection like that, and then we give it to the TLS layer, and then it also wants, oh, it wants certificate authority, certificates, and a server name. Okay, we don't know the server name until we connect, so let's move that to connect. We don't have CA certs yet either. We do have a server name though. That's this impl host name or address. Right, and then we'll go through the TLS instead of going through the ad adapt from that point on. How come that didn't work? Oh, it's just a dot. Oops. Interesting. Why did it not like that? Oh, <laughs> it did like that. It just needed me to hit save again. Okay, good. Yeah, it the, it it behaves like a decorator should. You be able should be able to substitute for the adaptee at every point after you. In, insert into the chain here. It's just it needs these additional bits of information. We don't have the certificates yet. Need to put that in.
Mm, let's put it here. String, right? Is it want a string? Yeah. And let's look at the TLS documentation to see you, uh, oh, what that is. We'll copy that. This is the concatenation of the root certificate authority certificates to trust in PEM format. Now we need to get it into this class. Yeah, how are we going to do that? I guess we will... We'll just have it something that you have to do before you call... Um, at like like the setting these delegates is just something you have to do. And I've already written the importing of certificate authority certificates that was in Rover, so let's copy that. DA certs, right? So it did all this stuff. So, actually, let's just make that another function so it's easier to read. So, load CA certs. Okay, make that a method up here. Okay, so need this helper system abstractions file. And I guess we don't need to print this. Just return, I guess. Actually, you know what? This is not really going to a real server, so we don't need to do any of this stuff. We don't have to have actual certificates, do we? Yeah, we can fake the whole thing. Actually, we can verify they get set correctly. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's say connection uh, set CA certs. And we'll say pog champ, right? And then what we'll do is we will expect it here, pog champ, to come back under mock TLS and wherever that was, uh, yeah, C asserts. All right. Someone, uh, someone was borrowing something from me. Okay, no, we're we're expecting the certificate says to be set to PogChamp, and the way it should work is we shall have the we'll have this method which should get forwarded to the TLS layer. It's an end-to-end -end test, basically. To for in order for this to work, we call this, and and then everything in the middle has to be connected. Right, this class needs that. Uh, we have set server info, now we need set see certs. I wonder if it's okay to, no, it's not okay to combine them, is it? I will just copy again from TLS decorator. This. I'll say this method is called to configure the adapter uh, with the root certificate authority, which is CA, certificates, 
to trust in PEM format. The implication is if you don't call that, then they won't trust anything and the TLS probably won't work. So it's pretty simple. The adapters are usually pretty simple in that most methods are just store and forward. Actually, oh yeah, we needed that, right? Because we're, we needed it there. Okay. So it's store and then forward there, right? So let's see. Okay, so it, it succeeds. This is failing because we now have a TLS layer in between and it's going to a mock TLS, which is sort of losing the message and so it's not getting through. So we need to kind of connect this through. So what it used to do, 7.22, is it expected to get back the test data as is, but now let's ex have it expect something else. Amount, how much? Let's construct what we expect to get back out. So expected. Data we expect server to receive. It doesn't really matter what we put here, actually. How about one, two, three, four, five? This is as good as anything. Let's do that, and then, uh, what was that? Oh, hi, Sourcefy. Oh, thanks for the bits. So kind of you. I don't deserve the bits, but thank you. So um, now how, why are we expecting one, two, three, four, five? The way we're gonna rig this is we're gonna have the uh, t mock TLS actually write that in response to it when uh, TLS write is called. So TLS write, see if I had to, if I, I copied this from somewhere else, let's see if we can use it. Stall is not, set. I think it has this. Okay, this is the input, right? We can check that if we want. In fact, I think we should. This right callback, where does that go? Oh, it's actually going to call it. Oh, but it's going to call it with the right... Okay, yeah, so that's how we did that. We have to set that up in advance. So mock TLS dot that equals data we expect server to receive. And then we can actually expect both, right? We can expect the test data to arrive in the mock TLS dot TLS write decrypted buff. Okay, except that's a vector and that's a string. So I need um, this test data as bytes again, because that's what we are going to compare there. Okay. So basically what this is doing is saying, hey, mock TLS, when you're told to write something, what I want you to actually write out Encrypted is one, two, three, four, five. And then the up and then the connection says sends hello world. It comes to the mock TLS. And mock TLS says, okay, he told me to write something, I'm gonna write one, two, three, four, five. So then we expect it to be received by our mock server. And then we also ask the mock TLS, well, did when you were told to write it was the decrypted version what we what we told the connection to write. So hopefully that works. It didn't work. Handshake was not called, really? I, mean, I didn't I didn't modify connection. Is that just a race condition? I think that might be a race. Yeah, that's a race. 
Oh, I missed a uh, Ixter. Hey, Ixter. How's it going? I have a race here now. I think it's because the TLS stuff is also in its own thread. I think I had a way to deal with that, didn't I? Um, let me think about this. It depends on how the behavior of this TLS stuff, right? Yeah, this starts this stuff. It starts it in a worker. So I think we need to mod we need to adjust this a little bit. That mock TLS does it have any? Oh, it does have a wake condition. Okay, so we can, we can modify this stuff. Oh yeah, it has an await thing already. Okay, we'll just add that to the handshake like that, and then we can do await. Here, um, mock TLS dot await, and then the predicate is return mock TLS handshake called. Did I get that right? I'm missing a parenthesis. No? Yes, I am. Why didn't it like that though? Uh, oh, the, I need to capture this because Muck TLS is a member of this. Got it. That should solve that data race. So yeah, connect is... Hopefully connect never fails now. So 726. So, okay, we're back to... We should probably repeat this await, right? Everywhere where we have uh, await connections. Okay. That wasn't it though. So, or was it? It got no. It's the same thing. So it's just not receiving. Oh, this is wrong. It's not test day. It's um the size of this. Okay, now it's crashing. <laughs> Go from test failure to test crash. Where is it crashing? Interesting. It didn't crash in the debugger, though. It actually passed the client send and it moved on. Is it just it's another race, I guess? Yeah, see, it's another race. Ooh, mutex destroyed while busy. Interesting. Hmm. TLS closed. Does it completely shut everything down? Oh, it doesn't. I think it you have to destroy the TLS for it to join its worker thread. I remember that. Yeah, so we need to actually destroy the TLS decorator first. You're reading Strastrup's C++ programming language book, trying to make a working setup for doing projects out of SpaceMax, Emacs, with Vim layer added on? <laughs> okay. Stepping on all the rakes. I'm trying to learn fast. By the way, do I use Visual Studio for all my C++ projects? I, I do, but that's only out of habit. Now that they have VS Code, I kind of want to switch to that uh, because uh, I can uh, have the same 
tools, whether I'm on my Windows or Mac or Linux. But yeah, I'm so so ingrained in me to use Visual Studio that right now I'm using it for. I just develop on Windows, even if it's going to run on Linux. To try to develop it on Windows first. MSYS2, I I know about that. That all, all the uh, Git tools for Windows are based on that. That's a pretty cool layer. I like the idea of being able to use POSIX APIs, but have it go to native Windows APIs underneath it, not through some kind of weird translation layer like what Sigmund does. Okay, I, mean, I need to stop and think about this, because sometimes it is... It's getting into this where it's, it's, it's using a mutex that's been destroyed. I need to think about why. I think it's because we are not destroying the TLS early enough. I think it has to do with this the way I use it here. When it's a member of my implementation, it won't be destroyed until my implementation is destroyed first. But I need it to be destroyed first because I'm using I'm giving it my own delegates, so I know what I'll do. I'll make this a unique pointer. Like that. And we can go ahead and actually um if I do that that means I need to reset I'll do a reset, that's what I'll do. I'll do it right here. So TLS dot reset new Like that. Actually, does it make sense to do it there or to do it on connect? I think it makes sense to do it on connect because I want disconnect to destroy it. Hmm. Yeah, furthermore, I want the destructor of connection to call disconnect too, don't I? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so here. Impl TLS reset and then Actually, you know what I'll do, uh, just to be safe? I'll, I'll make one on the stack here. And then do that. And all of this, and only if everything succeeds, Uh, will I um, move it like that? Yeah, I don't even need to do this closed. Oh, actually, we should. We should. But that way, if if we return early, like here, it'll destroy the TLS naturally because it'll be uh, only on the stack, right? And on disconnect, we will do close it, and then we will destroy it. And that we just call uh, dot reset null pointer. Let's see if that fixes things. Ooh. No. We got fixtures te fixtures destructor throwing something. Oh, it's empty. Yeah. Well, yeah. Duh. So... That's a, actually an easy check we should have had a test for. But it, uh, let's actually make a test for it. That's the right thing to do, right? So... Double disconnect should not crash. Or not even just a, not even a double disconnect, but disconnect when not connected 
should not crash. So we just, all we need to do is say connection.disconnect. Okay. Mm yeah, see, and it crashed. So we, I think we can solve it by just saying it, only if TLS is not null pointer. Then we do this stuff. There we go. So hopefully now I've all fixed the uh, destruction race condition and we're and we're done with client sending. Now we just need to handle server sending. Cool. Server sending. So it's just the opposite direction. It's just in our test we need to be um, a little bit smarter here. So it's failing on this line because it's not getting these bytes from the client, right? We're sending it from the server. This is the server side sending the con sending it from the server connection to the cl first client. And so, since it's going through the TLS layer, it'll sh it'll show it should show up in the encrypted buffer, and then TLS read will decrypt it and store it, right? So TLS read. See if I get this right. I always get the read and the write directions confused because the read of the client is the write from the server and vice versa. So it takes me a little bit of time to get reoriented here. If I used better names, maybe I wouldn't get so confused. Decrypted amount. I think this is where we want to put it in, like we, what we did in the other test. So, like data, we expect server to send. Data, we expect client to receive is actually what we want. Data we expect client to receive. And then we put that in the read D, no, read, read decrypted buffer, right? Because that's what gets sent back up, if I remember this right. Yeah, because it mem copies back into the output buffer, whatever we would put there. All right. So it's, we expect that to end up in data received. And we expect it to be that size. And then we can, just like we did here, we can expect the test data bytes as bytes to be the TLS read encrypted buff. So basically, what what the TLS layer will be given, or what you know what it will have received. Cool. Oh no, we have a race. So it passed once and then it failed. Okay, yeah, I think it's because we're not waiting long enough. We had yeah, because the TLS layer does done in a worker thread, so we need the same have the same kind of thing. Probably should do it. Was it clients? Client send might have the same kind of. Oh no, we have an await there. We have an await here. How come this is failing? Oh, um, this might get cleared out. That that might be why. Yeah, it gets cleared out. So we can't actually check that, can we? What does the TLS decorator do when data is received? That's what I want to know.
<laughs> I'm just looking for the callback that happens. Okay. Oh, here it is. Secure message received. Oh, it's the read callback that reads out of it. Okay, so in the mock, TLS read callback. Right, it'll show up there. Yeah, it should show up there. So why didn't it? We waited for the client to receive the those five bytes. Maybe, maybe I'm reading the wrong buffer. No, it's the correct one. I think it might be that this, yeah, I think I know what it is. This actually sends the data back up, right? Um, let's see, where is that? Here's where it sends it up. That's after TLS read returns. TLS read returns. Oh, by the time it returned, we should have put it in there. Oh, maybe it's called a second time and it's cleared back out again. That's probably what it is. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think it's because TLS read is called more than once. So it 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 it'll be in there briefly, but it'll disappear. So we can't really can't really rely on that it's staying there. The way our mock is set up. That's fine. We have slightly less visibility into how things work, but and the end to end is still correct. That we expect the data we expect to client to receive is the data we, we received, and we set that as like what the mock. TLS layer should de should quote unquote decrypt from this test data. So the end to end test is still there, just can't, not testing one of the other conditions in the middle, which is fine. Cool. I think I think we have now inserted the TLS layer, and it wasn't as nearly as gross as I thought it would be. We just had to pull in this mock TLS layer to do pretend encryption, and it, there's a lot of code in there we're not even using. I could strip it down, but I'm actually inclined to just leave it as it is and move on. So, Twitch or transport. All right, so in the interface, we allowed the client to set the cert. Oh, did we, do we have a test for that? CA certs. We did. That was part of connect test. In fact, I would, I'd probably see it if I looked here, whether the diffs in connect. Yeah, so we now, we now wait for a handshake of the TLS layer and we expect that the certificate authority certificates are set correctly. We added this test. Actually, actually there's a bunch of things we did. Essentially, we just inserted the TLS layer. So we'll say Twitch network transport insert TLS adapter uh, to encrypt or to, to secure secure all traffic. So 
what that boils down to is add connection set CA certs so that uh, the user or the uh, the app can tell the connection object what uh, certificate authorities it can trust. Second, expect connection to employ TLS through uh, uh, employ TLS decorator to secure the connection. And that takes the form, should I write this down? Yeah, is it, is that how you do it? Two stars? Can't always always forget how to do that. So then it that boils down to expect a TLS handshake on every connection. Expect decrypted data out, encrypted data in. On um, receive on data reception, and then on data transmission, expect encrypted data. No, otherwise, decrypted. I should I should flip these around. Encrypted data in, decrypted data out. Trans encrypt de decrypted data in encrypted data out exactly and then maybe i should say something about uh, this uh, disconnect ensure that uh, disconnect can be called when not connected without issues all right that's good oh need to stage all the things then commit. Push all the things and let's run all our tests again. It's sort of excessive to run them all since it, we really only changed Twitch network transfer, but it gives me the, like a sanity check. Good feeling to see all my tests continue to pass. Alrighty then, so. Take time to actually try to use this stuff in a real app because the whole chain should be ready now. We just inserted the TLS decorator in the middle here. So now our connection class uses TLS decorator and network connection, and it goes to a real socket. It's just in our test, the, the server the socket went to was our test server, and the, and the TLS implementation was like a fake one. But it's using the real TLS decorator, the real network connection, real operating system sockets. So every, the whole chain should be complete. If we just remove the mock TLS, it'll use the real TLS, and we can actually talk to Twitch. So time time to give that a try. We'll have to start a new app to do this. So from the root directory, I think I'll do this. Make directory. What are we gonna call this bot? I was gonna call it MathBot2001. Maybe I'll call it that to begin with. But I was thinking later to make it more generic. We'll call it MathBot2001 for now. And it'll be an application. So I'm gonna take an existing application in our workspace here and just kind of duplicate the contents and we'll just rename and change things around. So everything, from Rover is going to go into MathBot 2001. So the README, let's do that first. So MathBot 2001. This is a standalone program which it doesn't run a HTTP client. This is a standalone program which operates as a Twitch bot, a bot in Twitch chat creates an instance of the, and here's where the class changes, right? Twitch 
messaging class and doesn't have to do this anymore. Oh no, it does have to do this. It's Twitch network transport connection class in order. Actually, it doesn't provide it with an instance. It provides it with a factory for creating instances of that class in order to connect to the Twitch uh, chat server. And a, a join a channel and participate in chat. I think what I'll have it do at first is it's just going to listen and print out chat on my uh, console. But then we'll have it interact later. So usage, I don't think we need any arguments with it. So usage, what is it going to do? Connect to Twitch chat. Connect to Twitch chat and participate. And uh, well, what is it going to do? Right now it's just going to listen for messages. Has no arguments. Okay. Mathbot two thousand one connects to Twitch chat joins joins a specific channel and reports any uh, chat messages posted to the channel. We'll just have it do that for now. And why am I calling it MathBot 2001? Because I wrote a MathBot in previous streams which ran on my web server and the idea was something safe for the internet where uh, it didn't interact with anything other than numbers. And it would basically ask a question of the form of what is n times x plus y? Where n, x, and y were replaced with numbers, and then it would it would wait for someone to to type in chat just a, a number, and if the number matched the evaluation of the expression, it would say congratulations. Otherwise, it would say sorry. So something really simple and safe, and that's why it's called that, and that's what I'm going to call it for for this bot, and that's what because that's what I'm going to have it do once we verify it's working, once it can actually show us messages, we'll have it actually interpret messages and then ask questions. And then after that, if it's working out, maybe I'll ex extend the bot to do other things and we'll at that point probably rename it or something. Or we might just keep uh, this as it is and just make another bot to do other things. So this is all, the rest of this is all boilerplate. Licenses, MIT. The name here changes. MathBot2001. And do we need a timekeeper? I don't remember. Does, it depends if this Twitch messaging class needed a time. I think it did. Yeah, set timekeeper. So what happens if you don't call it? What's it? Is there a default timekeeper? There isn't. So we that's one. Right, so it has two dependencies, a timekeeper and a connection factory. So it's modeled after my web client program. So we'll have to have the same thing, a timekeeper class. It's going to depend on Twitch. And Twitch network transport. We don't need that directly because it's now built into the Twitch network transport. This I think we probably need still. The rest of this is boilerplate. And you can see I'm pulling in the um, CA certificates from the T, uh, Lib T, Libra, TSS, Libra SSL under apps open SSL has a cert.pim and we're just kind of borrowing that from them. All right, timekeeper is now, it's the Twitch timekeeper now. So basically wherever there's HTTP is not Twitch, but I think it's the same kind of interface. Get current time. Yeah. I 
think this is all the same. So main. So all this is changed. So that's tw instead of Twitch client, instead of HTTP client, it's Twitch messaging. Instead of that transport, it's Twitch network transport connection. Okay. You keep loading. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, the, don't know if we need all this stuff. Actually, I think we need that for loading the CA certs. We don't need that. Don't need that. All right. We don't need to worry about the default stuff because we have that built into the Twitch messaging. Okay, this is math bot 2001. It's, this is copied from the readme. All right. Shut down. Okay, we have no URL, so we have no environment. I'll leave it there because we might have it. I might add it. Actually, no, I do need it. Don't I? Yeah, because there's something very important which I'm not going to tell you guys. But I'll tell you of it. And that is the OAuth token. So... Instead of a, a URL for the server, actually, I'm just going to, because I want the formatting the same it's token. And just to get this right, how did I space that? Is that eight characters over? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sort of arbitrary, but. So this will be the file containing OAuth token to use. So. If there was no authentication token, anybody could run this and impersonate anyone on Twitch, right? So one of the, that's one of the key things about the Twitch API. If you look at the, what I research I did, is there's a protocol called OAuth 2.0 that, uh, that you use to get a string that gives you your method of authenticating to the server. It tells the server who you are and whether or not you're allowed to chat. And so when I run this on stream, I'll be putting the OAuth token in a file that I'll never show on stream because it's forbidden for me to share it with anybody and for good reason. If I did, then you all could go in and, and steal control of my bot, right? So I don't want that. So instead of putting the auth token on the command line or hard coded into the program i'm going to have it be it has to be in a file and we'll always pass the path to the file when we run it and then i'll never show you guys the contents of the file hopefully if if i do by accident i'm gonna have to be really quick in um uh removing the token so there, there's a procedure for revoking the token there's a procedure for revoking the token and i'll have to do that real quick if i accidentally reveal the token but hopefully i never will so we need i need to Include this in the main here. And include, okay, actually I can control Z this to get it back, right? Yep. And then copy this string to there. All right. So this is now going to be the path, whoops, how to do that. Path to the file containing the OAuth token to use uh, in authenticating with Twitch. And that's token file path. Actually, I should probably be clear here, right? Path, pass slash name of file containing the OAuth token to use, right? I should say that. All right. Interrupt handler is the same. So 
this goes here now. Mathbot 2001. Actually, I'm, I can replace all for that. Multiple token, token uh, path names given. No token path name given. Okay, now we're not parsing from a string here. Do I want to actually load the token into memory at this point or not? Actually, I, I think it's so. Actually, I think I do want to par pass it. So this will just be the token. This is the OAuth token. So I can move the token reading to this point. Oh, didn't I also? No, no, no. Never mind. I was thinking about the CA certs, but we're we're gonna we're gonna do what the rover did, which is expect it to be um, in the same directory as our exe. Side loaded, in other words. A token file I want to put in a completely different path so I don't accidentally check it in or show it on stream or anything. Okay. Yeah, so instead of this, I'm going to copy the code I had down here for the reading the pem file. And put it up here. It replaces all this. So... This is token file, and we read from token file path. If token file can't be opened, unable to open token file, token file path, there we go. Token buffer is token file size. Try to read the token file into the token buffer, unable to read token file. And then we can just say environment dot token equals, or actually I can just do a sign, right? Like that. Cool. Start client. We don't. I guess. I guess we'll keep that. We're gonna repurpose it though. Start. Well, how did we use this in Rover? Oh right. Okay. I guess we don't. Mm hmm. Let's remove it for now. Oh, although, um, no, I'm going to keep some of this stuff around. I'll, I'll say we'll say configure messaging. This function configures Twitch messaging object with the given Actually, it's not this is this comment was old anyway. Um, let's see, what is it, what do we actually have to do to configure it again? <laughs> My memory's so bad these days. Messaging. Right, we have to set a connection directory, we have to set a timekeeper, set a user. I think that's all we need to do, so, yeah. This is the messaging object to configure. Uh, 
Actually, I'm going to use TMI for Twitch messaging interface. Because I like the three letter shorthand. No, it's not connection, it's messaging. So, right. Twitch network transport connection. This is a connection object. This is going to get moved into a factory, though. Okay, this, I'll, we don't need any of this stuff. So this is where it's a little bit similar. It's messaging, or TMI, dot set connection factory. And it's this kind of a thing. And that. Okay, this is where um, my comfort level with Visual Studio Code reaches a limit. I need sort of IntelliSense to help me out, so it's, I might be switching now to Visual Studio. To do that, I need to pull in MathBot. So CMake lists, I need to pull in right here. Add subdirectory, MathBot 2001, and then command line CMake dot. Then we can switch over to our Visual Studio. Close all the things. Under Applications, MathBot 2001, Source, Main. All right. Yeah, this should be Token Buffer. See, VS Code didn't help me with that. It's just sitting at that IntelliSense is the tricky part that I don't know how to do exactly yet. Okay, so this connection factory, something that returns that connection takes no arguments. So there's no arguments. It returns a Twitch connection shared pointer. We don't do a decorator directly, we All right. Do this here. Do that there. I don't do that. Oh, wait a minute. No, I still I do need to do that. We get the certificate, authority certificates, and then it's we'd give it to that connection object, right? Set CA certs. That's it, right? Or is there is there more? I'm already forgetting. We don't need to do this because we're gonna talk to the real Twitch. We did that. I think that's it, yeah. So this tells the Twitch messaging that whenever it wants to make a new connection to call this function, this function will make this object set it up by config like subscribing to its diagnostics loading up the certificate authority certificates and then returning it and then the tmi class presumably then uses it to connect to the network send and receive messages and all that good stuff so it also needs a timekeeper right tmi dot set timekeeper actually just inline that guy we don't need to keep it around And is there anything else I needed to do? Oh, set the user. That was Im that's the important thing. How do we get our callbacks, right? So we need a class to be our user. Yeah, let's let's just build it in here. So this class doesn't really care. So. It just needs to be a shared pointer is all, the only requirement. And it's under the Twitch namespace. 
right? No, Twitch messaging user. All right, and it goes here. This is the object which will receive any callbacks from the Twitch messaging object for such things as chat messages received. Yeah. All right, so we just need to set it. Cool. Anything else we need to do? This, I think there's no possibility for this function to fail, so we don't need to return anything, and this can just be a void, and we won't have to return anything. Okay, so yeah, this, instead of fetching something and reporting, I think what we'll do is we will Actually, we don't need to do anything. It's all it's all handling our callbacks right now, so we, d we don't need this function at all. Okay, it's not client anymore. Stops the bot. It's now a bot. Actually, it's not a bot. It's the... Stops the... What do we call it in this one? Twitch messaging object? Do we even need a f function for this? It's just going to call demobilize. I don't think I don't think we need a method. I don't think we need a method for it at all. We do need a, a user class though, so let's make one. Hmm, put it up here, I guess. Let's put it right here. So class. Or maybe just a struct because it doesn't need to have any private stuff. We'll call it. We'll just call it Mathbot2000. It inherits the. or implements the messaging interface. And. Oops. Just didn't mean to type that. I think the way I set this up is they're all they all have defaults, so we can at first do nothing. Just to get it to compile. And we can just say this This is the type of object used to receive notifications from the Twitch from a Twitch it's really not okay yeah it's this is not not what i want to write this represents the chatbot itself it handles any callbacks received from the twitch messaging interface we'll also have it run its own worker threads if it wants and maybe it really belongs in another file. But right now I'll just put it there. Okay, okay. I think we will need it to have a copy of this delegate. So. We'll say this is used to report information to the use to the program to the user to the user of the app or the operator how about we call it the operator the bots operator okay this function is the entry point of the program it just sets up the bot As it log into Twitch, actually the bot's going to do that in response to uh, being logged in, right? I mean, uh, 
We'll have it op operate. Do we have callbacks for that, by the way? Yeah. So when we're logged in, we'll join the chat room. When we join, then we'll listen. Well, actually, it'll, it'll automatically tell us message. Yeah, so it just sets up the bot and has it log into Twitch. At that point, the, um, the bot will interact with Twitch using its callbacks. And... and possibly some background threads. Well, we'll just we'll do we'll change this comment later. Right now it'll just be fully callback driven. It also registers the sig int signal to know when the bot should be shut down. Not early, but just shut down. The program is terminated after the sig int signal is caught. How about that? All right. So this little stuff here is a brilliant way in using the Windows C runtime to find memory leaks. Unfortunately, there's a problem with with Libra, TLS, T, Libra SSL in that it leaks like a sieve. And so it kind of defeats the purpose of it, but I left it in. And if you're curious, you can just look up Libra SSL memory leaks and you'll find that they just don't have a clean cleanup of their code. It was proposed, and then people said it was too complicated, and they kind of dropped it. I was disappointed. Uh, anyways, Twitch messaging, TMI, right? And we will... Do we have it subscribe internally? No, we don't. So we should just subscribe ourselves. Oh, we don't have... We don't have that in... We don't have diagnostics in TMI yet. Oh. Okay, well, we'll leave that in as a to-do. Do this when TMI has a diagnostic, uh, be becomes a diagnostic publisher, diagnostics publisher. Otherwise, uh, we, I renamed that, right? It's configure messaging. And it wants the TMI, the environment, the user. So we need a user. So mathbot2001. Bot. So this will be bot. Actually, it, it's a shared, it's going to be a shared pointer. Right, so const auto bot equals standard make shared. Of that guy bot and is that the last one yep actually what a minute. yeah that's right and it doesn't return anything anymore math bot so math up and running or configured and then we want it to log in right so, actually, I think I want, I think I want eventually this class to handle the messaging internally. All right, we'll just, we'll just write it sort of, we'll just finish what we started and then we'll refactor it. So to finish what I started, instead of this, I kind of replaced that with tmi.login, didn't I? And then here's where we need a need a nickname. So it's math bot two thousand one. And here it needs the token. That's environment dot token. And then okay, really we should process we should register this handler first, shouldn't we? Is there any reason no it okay, never mind. This is when it's This is when it's received, so I need like a dummy loop to wait for it. So let me find if I already did this before. I think I did it in the web server. I had like um, 
Was it this monitor server? Yeah, while not shut down, sleep for a quarter second. Something like that. And then unregister the handler, say that we're exiting. How come my cursor is still a hand? Okay. We don't need, actually, we do need to stop it. We need to say T, uh, how do we do this? TMI.logout. Actually, then, uh, what's logout want? It wants a farewell. Okay. Bye. Bible thump. Because why not, right? And then, should we wait until we get it uh, log out? Do we get a log out? From the user interface. Yeah, log out. So we can await log out, I guess. Um, let's make it a bot property. So bot await log out. Actually, we should build that into this. We can build that into this, right? We can. We don't need. We don't need a sleep for anymore, do we? We can do this. Uh, hold on. Let me think about this. Right, instead of a sleep for, we can do uh, if bot await oh, log out break. And then we'll just make await log out timeout after like a quarter second so that it'll like leave this loop in two ways if we hit control c and that shut down that shut down is set by this interrupt handler by the way so if it, we hit control c it'll break out because of that otherwise it'll break out because the bot was uh, disconnected from twitch so if we reach here we'll wait again yeah just in case it was shut down if we already are logged out it'll it'll be a no op uh actually we don't want to do that if we're already logged out, do we? I, it, actually, it'll, it should be a no op anyway. We just need to have this log out now. Log out. Okay, these. Let me divide my properties from my methods. The reason I'm putting it in here is it's going to use some internal properties. And for that, I already know I'm going to need condition variable and mutex. Because we're waiting for things happening in another thread context to happen. Oh, rather than copying stuff, I wonder if I can get it from somewhere else. Not this one, obviously. I guess I could copy it from Twitch itself. Yeah. So I'll just copy this stuff. This is used to synchronize access, of course. This is used to say to this is used. This is used to signal when uh, any condition the main thread may be waiting for, or for which the main thread may be waiting has occurred. This is used to signal in any condition for which the main thread may be waiting has occurred. That might sound like funny English, but I think it's correct. Because I am a pedant. Pedantic English is my game. Alright, so log out. We will have to have a flag. Logged out. Start false, right? And then... This flag is set uh, when the uh, Twitch messaging interface indicates that the bot has been logged out of Twitch. So when it logs out, it's just going to quit. Later, if we want the bot to like run unattended, we'll have to have it like try to log back in. 
but for now it'll just do this. So I'm going to copy the sort of a boilerplate here that um, in general when you wait you do a lock guard. Where's the wait done? No, sorry, not a lock guard. Uh, unique lock, this one. You do unique lock and then you do a wait for. And let's rename this. So how about, how about main thread event? So main thread event, wait for logged out. And wait up to a quarter second, and then we'll return the result of that. And so I'll say, this method waits up to a quarter second for the bot to be logged out of Twitch. An, ind uh, an indication of whether or not the bot has been logged out of Twitch is returned. All right. So that should all compile. The scary thing is it actually might work. Although we aren't doing anything that, that it actually won't work because we're not over, we're not handling any callbacks. This is all empty, right? So what do we minimally we want to do? Handle log out, I guess. Actually, let's let's handle them all and do a diagnostic message when they happen, and we'll just see what happens. We'll have it log in and not even join a channel yet. We'll just see if it gets logged in. All right. So, oh, actually, maybe we want to message info as well, because we might get messages even if we don't join a channel, right? If someone whispers us. So, in fact, I can test that. I can use that to test. I can whisper my own bot. You guys can whisper my bot and maybe see it. So let's see. Twitch messaging, message info. What was in that message info? What channel it was sent in? The user sent it and... Oh, so this we won't get whispers. Whispers we don't have a callback for yet, right? Actually, what happens with whisper? Do we have anything for whisper? No, we're ignoring whispers. So we won't get we won't get messages. So we don't I don't actually have to do anything here yet. I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Someone's coming home, so that's why the dog started barking. Okay. All right, this argument was the level. So level, let's pick level one. All right, let's say logged in. And this will be a logged out. But additionally, here's where we want to do that. Um, where, did I already close it? No, I didn't. It's a... Uh, uh, Here. We want to get the lock. We don't need impul. Actually, that's interesting. Why did it pick that? Why does that compile? That shouldn't compile. There is no impl. That's weird. That shouldn't be there. Let's remove that. That should be there, though. All right. Anyway. 
Getting distracted. All right. So we lock, we do the lock guard, and then we have to say the logged out is true, and then we have to do wake, uh, was it main thread event notify one. So that's the standard procedure for how you do uh, signaling between threads in modern C++ is you have something protected by mutex, which is like the signal or the queue or the buffer or whatever. And before you wait for it to change or happen, you, you get a mutex. And then if you're saying that the change happened or you're doing the change, you do it. And then you do notify, you do notify one if you know there's only one thread or you only want to wake up one thread. Otherwise you do notify all and that wakes up all waiters. And then on the receiving end, you always use unique lock and then either wait or wait for, you give it the lock. And then if it's wait for, you give it a timeout. If you just do wait, there's no timeout. And then this is what's called a predicate or a, a function which evaluates true if, you, if you're done waiting. So we're basically going to wait until this flag gets set so the whole reason why we use the mutex is to avoid a race, right? That we might go to sleep after logged out is changed, but before the notify one is called, right? Because the notify one only wakes it up if it's already sleeping. And the wait for is kind of special in that it atomically unlocks the lock, then goes to sleep waiting for that, and then re-grabs the lock before checking it again. And it does that in a kind of loop up to this amount of time, which is really convenient. So, yeah, this should work. I just need to put my token file someplace and have this actually actually run. Actually, I'm wondering what it'll do if I just give it um, an empty token file. Make a new window off screen here. File, new file. I'm just typing an invalid token, but I'm putting it in another directory that um, I don't want to actually, this will be where my token is. I don't want anyone to know where it is or what's the contents of it. So where am I gonna put this? How about secret files no one should ever look at? Is that a good name for a directory? Just kidding, folks. Just trying to pick. Oh, I already had an area where I... Oh, I'll just make a new directory. Uh, sorry, I'm doing this off, off stream, but hopefully I'll be done in a moment. How do you do... New, oh, there is it. Go new folder. Okay. Let me make sure I did this right. Uh, sorry, I can't show you guys anything yet, but it's got the t token. Well, it's got a fake token, but I still don't want to show it because I might accidentally show it later and I don't want that to happen. Bear with me. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, cool. So that built. So I should now be able to say Mathbot 2000, debug Mathbot 2000, go to the doc, um, documents. No, not documents. Projects OAuth. Token.txt. I guess I could have shown you guys that much of it. <laughs> see what it actually does. I don't actually see it doing anything. Oh, it crashed. Well, let's debug it. See, see how far it got. Um, 
I should have actually tried to make a network connection, and did I not configure that right? Maybe not. I, I mean, I should have expected, I, I would have expected to see messages from the underlying network connection, but maybe I, I had the level lo too low. Actually, let me check something. Let me make sure that the, yeah, the certificates are there. So, it subscribes to the diagnostics. So what do we set the diagnostics to? Maybe I set it too high. Mm. No, I set it to zero. Okay, let's run it. <laughs> Set a startup project. Debugging. I just have to be really careful about this. If I put the... We'll put the fake in there, and I'll just name it fake for now. And I, sh I need to make sure I never, ever put the real token here on the stream. This is obviously a fake token. In fact, I can show you guys what the contents of that fake token is. It feels bad, man. That that should never work. So we should get like, or we shouldn't get logged into Twitch at all. It should reject us. Let's see what actually happens. I want to actually see it hit that line. Let's see how far it gets. Never got that far. What is it doing? I don't know. It's just hanging there. Let's hit control C. I think it's some problem with the debugger. The ready is blinking. Oh, maybe it's loading symbols. Yeah, I think it was loading symbols. Okay, what's the main thread doing? Okay, yeah, let me turn off debug. Where is it? Windows symbols, I think. Where is that? No, it's like debug options, right? Symbols. Yeah, turn off Microsoft symbol servers. Yeah, that's what it was. It was just loading the symbols and it was taking forever. Okay, so where does it actually go when it does that? Okay, so this is the... Okay, let's, let's go to the next level. Ah, yes, that's where it should go. This connection, though, what is it? Twitch connection, okay. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Um, it didn't, yeah, hold on. Let's cl stop that. This never does... Subscribe to the actual TLS's diagnostics, does it? Yeah, that's the problem. So TLS, subscribe, right? And we can pass our own um, impul diagnostics sender chain and... I want to see all diagnostics. And the same thing with the ADAPT. Yeah, I forgot to subscribe to that one as well. Diagnostic sender chain. That makes one sender receive another one's published messages and add another. It's like you can chain them together. I, I, I did that work off stream for... Anyone who's curious. Okay, 
That's probably why I didn't see any diagnostic messages at all, because I wasn't subscribing to them. Let's run it again. Um, it needs the fake token. Okay, there are, we're getting something. Still crashing at the end. I think it actually is talking to Twitch. There's like a, what is that? A five second delay after which, like if you fail to provide a correct token that it just disconnects you. So yeah, I think we, I think, I think it's actually talking to it. Let, I think we need to add something to show the actual contents of the messages. Might have to bite the bullet and add diagnostics to the Twitch messaging class itself, because I forgot to do that. Um, I'm going to do that, but first I need to take a minute break. Just a minute. So I will be right back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So, yes, I think we can raise it this one up one level. So that's inside this connection here. We can... We don't really need to see all TLSs for both stuff, and then... Also, the underlying transfer layer, we don't need to see its stuff. That should quiet it down a little bit. I wonder if I should handle the, the crash first before I add the extra messaging. Let's handle the crash first. So, just be able to hit go and then see the same thing in the debugger. And five seconds later, it'll crash and we'll get to see why. Hopefully. There we go. By the way, um, I have the, an, a breakpoint manually set on the abort function for that kind of thing because um, some crashes are actually caught by the runtime by the implementation of this abort function so it's handy to have a, a breakpoint on abort so it's logout is being called and oh the diagnostics message delegate is empty that's the problem Okay. I'm just wondering, is it better to check if it's null or initialize it with an empty delegate? What do I do in other pla cases like this? Uh, let's see. It was this class, right? No, no, wait a minute. This is where it should always be set. I'm just not setting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't need to do a check because I should always be setting it. Like that, right? Yep. I'm going to have to wrap it up for a bit. Or wrap it up in a bit because it's almost dinner time. But I'm I'm hoping to at least show that it's talking to Twitch and uh either later after dinner or tomorrow or the next day I'll actually have it use the real OAuth token and uh actually listening to chat. 
yeah, so this should fix it. We should see a log out. Okay. So we saw l multiple logouts. I only expected to see that one. I didn't expect to see these other ones, though. Let's see why. So that would be in the messaging class in log. Uh, no, sorry. It's in our callback here. Let's just run and see all the places it happens. Okay, yeah, so it's the log and attempt waiting for the message of the day it never happened. And then the second one is because we told we told it to disconnect. Okay, so there's there's extra ones that we get for when we when we tell when we disconnect our end, we also do a log out, and the third one. Okay, I guess connect disconnect is called twice. Server disconnected. Ooh, that shouldn't happen. Oh, the TLS is empty. Now the race condition. So what does stop worker do? Okay. And the worker would have closed. Oh, no, it's... Okay, I see what it's doing. Oh, connection's probably already closed, right? Yeah, so we need that... We need to have that protection in this class. We had that in disconnect, we just didn't have it in send. So let's add that really quick. And support tests. Crash. So a uh, send. When not connected should not crash. Send. Hey guys, when we're not connected should not crash. So, crashes, and not crashes. Okay, that was one bug. Okay. So it's not crashing anymore, right? Um, in the window. Here it is. Cool. So these memory leaks, I'm pretty sure, are all from Libra SSL, but it's really hard for me to tell. Unless there's something obvious in the... in the It prints the first uh, tw 8 bytes or so, or 12, 16 bytes of it. But it, it it's all binary data. It's really hard to tell. But I'm pretty sure it's all Libra SSL. I was tracing it offline like last couple weeks ago and it's really hard to track down because the allocation numbers aren't aren't consistently the same because of of there being multiple threads doing memory allocations so all right so we're we're just not seeing anything when we actually receive a message and I don't have time right now to put it in but at least we can maybe we can hack it in we'll hack in when we receive a line that's what we'll do right here. So we'll just we'll basically do a printf. And what's the convention? Greater than if it came from Twitch, right? And then n. It's a total hack. Don't do this in real. Uh, don't do this at home.
There we go. So yeah, that's the only thing we get back from Twitch if our token isn't right. It's an authentication failed. So that tells me that in our messaging class, we should be looking for these notices. And in particular, we should be seeing this. We should be looking for this and like key off of that, that if we see that we are, um, our token is not correct. We should report that back up to the user saying, hey, your token wasn't right. Or either that, or maybe we just print notices straight to the uh, console, to the operator, and then they'll just see it. This logged out, let's make sure we don't see that multiple times. So that's that should be pretty easy. We'll just keep our own flag. Actually, we already have it, right? So we say, if not logged out, we'll print logged out. And actually, we don't need to do the rest of this stuff either. If so, if we're, if we're logged out, we can return early. That's one thing I like to do, early return. All right. So now we can see that it should work if I had the right token in there. Do I have the, enough time to put the token in before I get called to dinner? Let's see. I just need to find where I put the token. Because I got a token. And where is it? Where did I put it? Um, ah, yes. Okay. Let's see if this one works. In a new file, I call it real. No, you guys can't see that, can you? All right, good. <laughs> Save as real. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna close it now. Now you guys, now now I can't accidentally show it. I just have to be real careful. Let me, for the first time I connect, let me move this off screen just to be extra, extra safe. Uh, hold on, my console is messing up. Okay, there, I fixed it. All right. Okay, I guess my token's not valid. All right, I forgot. I. I have several tokens. I don't know which one I kept and which ones I revoked. So this one's still failing. So I need to, I think I'll, what I'll do is off, like right after the stream ends, I'll go um, verify I have the right token. And then next time I stream, we'll, we'll hopefully I have a, a working token and we'll actually be able to talk to Twitch for real. So for now, I'll say adieu and we'll go host someone else. And I'll, I might come back later tonight, so we'll see. Let me uh, quickly look and see who is streaming. Okay. Different people are streaming right now. How about we go host uh, Pyro Shade? Looks like he's working on an indie game. FPS TCG wizard game. So here's his link and we're gonna go host him. And uh, for now, thanks for watching and hopefully see you guys again real soon. Thanks.